Welcome back to Investing with Confidence. I am your host, Joshua David, and we are having a good time in studio talking about financial illiteracy and hopefully improving that to financial literacy. As we get into this next segment, and I guess continuing this topic of of the institutions, the smart money, um, supply and demand, it's how the financial markets really function, right? Mm -hmm. Right. And that's really... You know, that's really how everything functions in life, too. When there's more buyers than sellers, price will go up. When there's more sellers than buyers, price will go down. And you mentioned in that first segment is there's so many people out there that like to complicate things. They put so many different things, and that's how they make their financial decisions. You want to be able to simplify that. Right. And that's what the institutions are doing. They're simplifying their trading and investing to create income. What are some of the things that they are doing? But here's the key. These techniques and concepts, they're also available to us, the public. Well, exactly. In, in fact, the, the institutions, because of what they do, it simplifies the, the process for us because we don't, we don't have to learn different strategies for different assets or for different types of, of trading. Uh, it's the same basic core foundational strategy. In fact, we call it a core strategy that you will use for everything. And really what that does, it, that's the timing part of it. It shows you where the activity is. You mentioned supply and demand. That's really something that can't be argued. That relationship between supply and demand is always there in any financial transaction. Always. When there are more buyers for something, price will go up. And always when there are more sellers for something, price is going to go down. And and really what everybody knows, and we always kind of joke around about this in these classes, we ask people if uh, they know the answer to these, this question is fill in the blank, buy blank, sell blank. And it's always the, the correct answer. They always give the correct answer. It's mm-hmm. always buy low and sell high. The concept mm-hmm. sounds pretty simple. It's very simple. But it, do people do that? Though? No. They, in, in the, as human beings, we do the opposite. It's buy low, sell high is what you were saying. Yeah, buy low and sell high. Did yeah. I say the opposite? No, I, think, I don't think you said oh, anything. Okay. All right. <laughs> buy low and sell high. Everybody agrees with that. That's that's just a basic concept that makes sense. The truth is, as human beings, we do the opposite because of the emotions we have. Human beings will find a way to screw things up no matter how simple it's, it's, it's made. But the problem there is that you're doing exactly the opposite of what you should do. So as an online trading academy student, what we want you to do is this. Be a buyer. Buy from a seller that's selling low into an area where there are buyers waiting to buy. In, in other words, identify where there are buy orders, big institutional buy orders on a price chart. And that's the important thing. Identify it on a price chart. And then just let the sellers out there sell low into that buy zone. That's where we're ready to get into the market. And then as a seller, you're going to sell to somebody that's buying high, doing the opposite of what they should do. They're buying high right into an area where there are institutional sell orders waiting to enter the market. That's where we want to be a seller. So, Let me, you know, you were talking about earlier about simplifying things, how the institutions simplify that. Mm-hmm. I'm going to simplify that for our listeners. Yep. Right? Okay. Because most people wait for price to be to go higher. They wait for earnings to be good, good company management. All that stuff has already happened when price is already high. That's when most people buy. And then as and on the flip side, when things are going bad, uh, to earnings are bad. The CEO got in trouble for doing something and the company is just tanking. That's when people typically sell after that's happened, which is low. So you want to do the opposite. Buy right. low, sell high, but before price actually goes up. No, exactly. You want to get in. You Really what we're doing is we're looking for unfilled orders. And then once they become filled, you know, really, then it's kind of too late. Then you've missed out on a good part of the move. So identify unfilled orders. That's where you're ready to get into or out of an investment, out of the market, into the market. That way you can take full advantage of a trend, which the institutions basically start and, and end. And they, they're they able to do that because they know what the value of something is to get into it. And they know when it's overvalued and they want to get out of it. Now, you had mentioned earlier some of the things that Wall Street or, by, by the way, when we talk about the smart money in Wall Street, we're, we're talking about the big firms out there, the big brokerage firms, uh, the big banks, uh, you know, Wells Fargo. Uh, we're talking about Goldman Sachs, J.P. Morgan, our hedge uncle, fund managers. Our uncle, uncle Warren. Uncle Warren. Uh, that's the smart money. And, and they're not, uh, they have access to information. So they're, they're already looking at all the fundamental things. 
We don't need to do that because by the time you as an individual investor go through the, the balance sheet, look at the books of a company, you get all that fundamental information, the movement has already taken place by the institutions. And we see that a lot where institutional activity takes place before something significant happens with a company or the market. And it's simply because they have that information that we don't get or we get it too late. So that's why it's so important to follow what they do. And they're not using the things that they put their clients into. They're using assets that are different, like the the futures market, the foreign exchange market, the options market, not mutual funds. And, and they, they will have stock portfolios, but basically for their clients, for you as the public, you are put into something like a mutual fund or a structured product or maybe some individual stocks. Why aren't they telling you to do the same thing that they're doing? You know, maybe that's an important question, and uh, I think we have the answer to it. We might. We just might. <laughs> but, you know, Al, with the with the institutions and smart money, with them creating things, that kind of circles back to that first segment when you're talking about they, they make a trail or they leave a trail behind right. them or a footprint. And that's why it's important to understand how to identify that on a price chart, where they're buying and where they're selling. Which is, which is the core strategy, which is designed to teach you to, to learn how to do that. Al, I know there's a lot of people listening, and you know sometimes people still think that the public is moving these markets, the, the uh, you, know, you and I, the, mm-hmm. the retail investors, right? But it's still the institutions. And some interesting stats from this past year um, is individual investors actually made up of about, of about 19.5 percent of equity trading this right. past this past year or equity volume we'll call it in 2019 that was at 15.5 so a lot of that increase has came from you know a lot of stock trader or brokers are going to free free trades it's very cheap to trade and invest but the the key takeaway from this is 80 percent of that volume is still the smart money right and a lot of people think it's actually the retail investor but the good thing is we want to identify where they're buying and selling. And you mentioned something a little bit earlier about different assets. They're not just using the stock market. We talked about the equity trading right here. They're using the futures market. They're using the forex market. They're also using the options market because they they offer different, uh, we'll say, perks. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about some of those perks and why these uh, assets are phenomenal for us retail investors as well. Yeah, and it's, it's important to know that, that those a- – uh, strategies, those assets that we're talking about, the we'll call them leveraged assets, futures, forex options, those are available to you as a retail trader. Uh, they're not available in your 401k, for example, but they are in a uh, self-directed retirement account, which we'll talk about later. A self-directed and, 401k you can use them though. Yeah, correct. That's correct. If you have a self-directed 401k. And, and these are the things that we talk about in, in the classes but there are ways for you to take advantage of these assets. You know, and you mentioned the the number of people, the, the growth in the number of people that are invested in the market these days. That actually is is a great thing for us. And you know, unfortunately for a lot of those people, it's not because they're they they went into a market that just continued to go up. Mm-hmm. And, and they could throw their money at basically the the technology stocks, the healthcare stocks, and and not really worry about too much. That may change. I mean, there's going to be a rotation at some point in time. The uh, the 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 uh, assets that underperform, the sectors that underperform, may take over. Maybe it'll be energy or financials in the in the next year. But it's un, it's important to understand that the institutions are going to tell us that we don't have to go out and do a whole lot of research there. But part of the problem with a lot of these people that are have gone into the market is that they're doing it with margin right now. The margin debt is over $700 billion. It's the highest in history, and we're seeing a lot of involvement in things like inverse ETFs, and, and the options volume itself has gone up about 48%. The, the, the reason that that's a good thing for us is that the, these new traders, are, are they are moving the price once the institutions have made a taken a position or exited a position, or when something significant has happened in the economy or in the world, you know, they'll jump in and, and they may be able to move the market. But what they're doing is they're simply moving the price of something on a faster basis into a zone where we want to be prepared to either buy or sell. So they're really helping us out in that in that respect. Now, the assets that we're talking about, I think the biggest advantage to futures, forex and options is leverage. You know, we talk about having an, an edge. That's one of the ways that you have an edge 
over other traders is to use these assets. And one of the problems that people have in, in really uh, addressing their income needs and their, their wealth needs is not understanding leverage and using it, which is probably the worst thing to do, or not understanding it and not using it. And just this is a little little bit of kind of a far out analogy, but um, do you ever go to the state fair? You you go to the fair once in a while, don't well, you? Once in a while, we actually uh, host a show there one, well, uh, we, once a year as well. We, we did uh, <laughs> not this not, past not year, this though. last year, <laughs> but in previous years. But you know, one of the things a lot of people do when they go to the midway is they'll you know they'll they'll put a lot of money into these games. One of which is where you throw a ball at uh, at some pins. Mm-hmm. You know, and l- let me ask you this: Who has an edge? Somebody who gets three balls for a dollar to throw, or thirty to a hundred balls for a dollar? Oh, that's tough math. I can't figure that out. <laughs> Just take a guess. Take a wild guess there, Josh. So, say it again. Let's no. go. Let's, <laughs> let's go with the thirty to a hundred. <laughs> Obviously, <you> if <laughs> you can give, you can buy thirty to a hundred balls for a dollar instead of three balls for a dollar. You have a much better chance. That's basically what leverage is. It's taking your dollars and and then having control over many more dollars worth of an investment. That's what leverage is. It's a, very much like a mortgage uh, in the housing market. Uh, you know, and then there's really, there's two values. There's an investment value and a market value. Market value is what you pay to get into or what you get when you get out of a, 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 an investment. But that investment value with leverage is much greater than the market value. So you're getting a multiple. It allows people with smaller accounts to participate with, you know, the potential for larger returns. Futures and Forex as assets trade 24 hours a day. So you have, you know, some versatility there. Great liquidity with these assets. You can use them to hedge your portfolio. One of them, uh, options can be used as an insurance policy, which is really important when I talked about that margin debt. One of the concerns there is if we do go through a correction or a another bear market, people are going to be getting calls from their brokers, not saying, how are you doing? It's saying, hey, you need to send us more money. you got a margin call. That's usually what happens. And that, that will happen again, and that just drives the price down quicker. It's one of the reasons the market goes down faster than it goes up. Just be prepared because that's a great opportunity. You're right. Think about that. If you have the opportunity to utilize somebody else's capital, but also trade invest any time of day. These are, these markets are open 24 hours a day during the week. So you have the opportunity to do that, to do that in the evening. Say you work in the day, it's available at night. Al, you mentioned something very interesting. You talked about an insurance policy for your accounts. Everybody has insurance on their everyday life, their cars, their homes. Learn the techniques and strategies to, to insure your portfolio. Coming up next, we'll be right back. <laughs> 